Talking Lead Heads, we are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. I don't know about you guys, but that music gets me pumped every time. All right, so I am back from vacation. I went on my very first cruise ever, went to the Caribbean, the Caribbean, the Caribbean, however you say it. That's where I was. Had a great time. Had a little birthday celebration while we were out there, so happy birthday to Lefty. And then, of course, a couple of days being home, we get slammed by these tornadoes. So I'm going to be going out with Sheepdog Impact Assistance over the next few days as you guys are listening to this. And we're going to be helping out some of the harder hit areas here in the uh, Middle East Tennessee area. So if you guys get an opportunity, go by sheepdogia.org and donate. And if you're in the area and you want to come by and lend a helping hand, there's uh, links on their Facebook page and Instagram where you can sign up and uh, physically, actually physically come out and, and help us out. So the uh, episode I dropped while we were gone, I hope you guys had an opportunity to go back and listen to that. That'd be episode 337. We had Chris Tonto Peranto teamed up with Charlie Melton. And I got to tell you, man, that was a great time, a great interview with those two guys. And of course, Brad Starr was joining us there, the big brains on Brad. Uh, excellent interview there. We had the guys from Silencer Co. And then we got to talk to the ladies from Wheelchairs for Warriors, another great organization that if uh, you heads are so inclined, you'd, you wouldn't be doing yourself a disservice by going and supporting that organization either. So this episode, we're going to be continuing our SHOT Show interviews, and you are not going to be disappointed as usual. In our lineup this week, sitting down for a conversation, we had Keith Garcia come by, and Keith brought Frank DeSelma with Patriot Ordnance Factory, that's POF, uh, and you guys are very familiar with POF, I'm sure you listeners are, uh, and they're talking about a new 308 that they're releasing, it's called the Rogue, that's like under six pounds. So that, that's a great interview. And then also joining us on that interview, uh, Professor Paul, Paul Markle, joins us for that too for, for a brief period. Also have the guys from ASP, Michael Hess, our good buddy Michael. Uh, you know those XT DFs that we gave away a few months ago? They've got a new version of that out. It's called the Spectrum. And uh, we're going to talk about all the awesome new features that that flashlight has. And it's another dual fuel flashlight. And then a new company, one we've never had on the show before, U.S. Arms Company. And this is another interview that you guys aren't going to want to miss. Uh, very innovative company there, U.S. Arms Company. And uh, talking about some, some pretty cool products that they've got available that you guys definitely don't want to miss out on. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the Frank DeSelma with the POF. Very surprising um, interview there. I, I've never met Frank before. Uh, but just to listen to his values and the, the way that he runs his company uh, is is pretty awesome. And I know you guys are going to love that interview. So uh, as you're listening to these, go to these companies' websites, their Facebook pages, their Instagrams, and let them know that you're hearing about them on the Talking Lead podcast and how much you enjoy uh, the information and the products that they are bringing to market. Just drop them a little message. I mean, you don't have to be uh, real long about it. Just say, hey, heard you on the Talking Lead podcast. Love love what you're doing. Uh, thanks for being innovative. Thanks for, you know, whatever. That's the best thing that you guys can do to get the word out there about our podcast. And uh, and then, of course, to let these companies know uh, how much they're, they're being appreciated. And speaking of, make sure you go and support all the companies that make this show possible like Keltec, Keltec Firearms, Buck Knives. Of course, they, they sponsored the lead quarters at the 2020 SHOT Show this year. And then Keltec is going to be sponsors for the NRA annual meeting here in Nashville. So if you lead heads are going to be coming out, make sure you stop by Keltec's booth. We're going to have the lead quarters set up there doing interviews. Probably we'll have some cool giveaways as usual. Uh, and speaking of giveaways... We've got some more information on the big Keltec CP33 giveaway that we're going to be doing. 
So we've teamed up with Keltec, Mission First Tactical, Buck Knives, Fioki Ammo, and Smith and Bradley watches. And in addition to the CP33 that we're having tricked out by Mission First Tactical, Mission First has done a one of a kind custom holster for the CP33. And I've seen pictures of it and it looks really good. So Dave over at Mission First did a great job on that holster. You guys are going to love it. Buck Knives have has sent a has sent one of their big fixed blade knives. I don't know which one it is. Uh, I'll get more info on that and let you know. And then Fioki Ammo is going to put up like a, uh, a big can of 22 ammo, a voucher for that. And Smith and Bradley is putting up one of their new Springfield watches. So we're going to be calling this like the ultimate EDC package. And uh, we're going to be bringing you more info on that coming up. We're hoping to kick it off and release it by mid-month, mid-March here. So go and show all these companies some love. Mission First Tactical, Keltec, Buck Knives, Fioki Ammo, Smith Bradley Watches, and of course Modern Spartan Systems. Can't keep those guns running without their products, their cleaning and lubrication products, and their awesome TVT engine oil additive. We'll keep all your vehicles and anything you got within an engine running smooth and pure. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into these interviews that I was building up to. Uh, like I said, I've got to, to get packed up and get ready to go. We're going to go help Sheepdog Impact Assistance. They're going to be rolling into town tonight as I'm recording this. Uh, and then first thing in the morning, we're going to be uh, going out and assessing some areas and providing help where needed. So make sure you guys go to Sheepdog Impact Assistance website, sheepdogia.org. Uh, you go to their Facebook page, you go to their Instagram page, and donate, donate money, donate gift cards, donate your your time. If you're in the area and you can make it out, we'd love to see you out there. I'm going to be out there uh, over the next few days and this weekend. So hope to see some of you lead heads out there. All right, roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, cool. You're going to come by tomorrow, right? What time, what time you want to? What's good for you? Like nine? Ten? Even better. Yeah, I was cringing at nine. But <laughs> All right, thank you, buddy. Thanks. Keith Garcia right there. How are you, sir? Best three-gunner in the nation right there. Oh, yeah? Yep. Right on. So he needs to see your product. Yeah. All right, guys, we are at the 2020 SHOT Show, bringing it to you from the official lead quarters of Buck Knives. And this is day three. We're about, what? One third of the way, would you say, Justin? Justin's my helper. Justin's been helping me out. He's been doing a great job. I'm going to lose him today, so I'm on my own tomorrow, Dad Gummit. So uh, joining me now, and you may have seen the live video that we did, the live feed, we've got the uh, guys from U.S. Arms Corps, or U.S. Arms Company, not Corps, sorry. I see that CO, and I throw Corps in there all the time. Uh, so they came to us via... Uh, one of our lead heads, Jerry Black out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He's, he's a big listener of the show, yeah, and, a, and uh, he's for – You couldn't find a nicer guy. Right. Is your mic on? I check. You got that? There it is. Yeah, you okay. got to get up on yeah, it I'll, I'll get up on it. So, uh, yeah, Jerry and I grew up as childhood friends, and, and I'm proud to know him. Yeah, okay. so Jeff uh, Hornsby is uh, who you're hearing now. And uh, Jeff came by to me yesterday, said he's good friends with Jerry Black, and That's right. introduced himself and was telling me about the products that uh, – you guys are, are putting out and uh, they sound pretty innovative and we're we're all about innovation here on the talking lead podcast so uh, we want you guys to talk about this awesome muzzle break that you're uh, bringing the talon to market here yeah so the talent, this is james by the way yep james mcmillan here uh, go by eric um so the m905 talon is uh it's a unique uh, muzzle break by design, it's uh, we've got literally hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up into the development of this brake. Um, my original design started from this thing. I was a young kid. I didn't like shooting big bore guns, and I didn't shoot some deer because I didn't have the, the caliber to be able to reach out there and get them. So around 16 years old, this has been in my head. So from there, um, I, uh, I kind of designed this thing, and I partnered with L.H. Thompson, uh, aerospace company, and. Um, Very cool. We uh, we kind of wrapped this thing up, did some prototypes, 
our objective was to stall the Barrett, and we did that. Uh, we were able to keep it from cycling, and then we uh, we started working on the 556 variant, which is a little smaller, and uh, do some tests because the cost of ammunition is so high for the 50 BMG. Right. So, <clears throat> at any rate, through about what would you say, Brian? A year and a half, two years? Yeah, we had a year and a half for two years of engineering development. We ran it through some uh, simulation software and trying to optimize the, uh, the recoil reduction and the noise level. Right. And we were able to get it down to 94%, 94 recoil reduction. Right, right. So um, we took it to Picatinny Arsenal. And I had built another, uh, or we had built another 50 BMG. And I was able to put my 32-pound little girl behind a Macmillan Tac 50. <laughs> oh, wow. And and, and she, how did she feel about that? <laughs> she says, "I really like it." Okay. That's what she says. I'll show you the video when we're done here. Now, did you warn her beforehand about you know what she was uh, getting behind? <laughs> no. Um. The, that I, I kind of kept her off that trigger. She had been on the uh, the 22, 22 short, 22 long rifle, 22 magnum up okay. to that point. All right. So you built her up to it. That's right. That's right. You're a good dad. But but I wouldn't <laughs> do anything to hurt my daughter. Um, and I, I have a, a buddy of mine um, that is a U.S. Special Forces sniper instructor that uh, put his son, seven-year-old son, behind the 50, and he uh -huh. was able to shoot it as well. Wow. So uh, we took his information and the videos, all the testing, to uh, Picatinny Arsenal. I asked them for a 20-millimeter Vulcan and a tank. They were ready to give it to me. And that within <laughs> okay. 24 hours, we had a crater that was emailed to us. And we declined the crater because once you get involved with the government in that capacity, then they own it. So we used our uh, own money. They were being, they were being, used a little trickery on you there, weren't they? Well, they're seeing if you'd fall for it. Uh, nah. Damn, old government. <laughs> there you go. So um, you don't have to comment on that. At, at any rate, I have to be. Careful. Plead the fifth. I have to be careful. <laughs> plead the fifth. That, I plead the fifth. They, <laughs> they were good guys up at, at Picatinny Arsenal. They, they were really good guys. <laughs> they were. Um, so we did some more testing and uh, long-range testing. So on the 50, when you're, um, uh, when you're shooting the 50, at 100 yards on 35 power, your crosshairs are still on uh, the hole that you just shot. Mm -hmm. At 1,000 yards or 1,000 meters, crosshairs are about a half inch off where you were originally aiming, and you can see the vapor trail through the glass from that. Wow. Yeah. So you have these uh, available for different calibers. We do. I mean, you're talking about the 50 cal, but uh, you can slap these on 308s. We're slap them on 556. Five, That's correct. Okay. 22s. I mean, you don't really need them for 22s, but I hadn't tried it on 22. You know? Because we're making. Well, like, why not? We're like making big bore guns feel like 22s. I know, but yeah. imagine what it'd do for a 22. You know what I'm saying? You think we got enough gas to do that? I, I don't know. The uh, the the five five six is available now. The three oh eight size will be available in about three months, and uh, we're looking at some uh, bigger calipers, uh, caliber um, three three eight Lapua stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we're looking at the three three eight Lapua after that. Very cool. Makes your, make your AR feel like you're shooting a BB gun. Yeah. As yeah. it is. And so what's the weight out. on? I'm I'm holding. I guess the uh, the AR version. It's about nine ounces. About nine ounces. Yeah. Okay. That's not. I mean, that's not. Uh, too much heavier than than your heavy duty brakes that that you're throwing on there. Um, it's very it's very sleek, very slender. So it's adding about what is that about a uh, two inches, about two inch and a half. So it's an inch and a half wide. Yeah. Um, on a traditional, uh, I kind of wished I'd have brought one of the guns so that you could see it on it. Yeah, I wish you did too. It Jack looks gun. like it belongs there. It, uh, it, it. But as our listeners are are listening to this, they can go to your website and they can get a visual as we're talking, and yes. that is at U.S. Arms Company. What's your website? www.usarmsco.com, or they can go. find it thebreak.com. The, the muzzlebreak.com. Yeah, the the muzzlebreak.com. Muzzle are you on the social meds too? You on the Instagrams and the Facebooks? That's. That's up, that's up and coming. We're really going to be launching uh, U.S. Arms Company on Facebook uh, this week. Okay. We have a site, but uh, we're going to add a few thousand likes to the page. Okay, there quickly. you go. Yeah, well, I'm and, sure uh, you get a lot yeah, of lead heads on yeah, there, oh, too. Oh, yeah, a lot of lead heads. Oh. You know, another thing is uh, night vision capability with this, uh -huh. where you don't have the flash because the way this gas is supported out. The way it's spreading it out. Right. You know, so it's... Um, yeah, dissipates optics, it. Yeah. yeah, dissipates it. Works with this brake versus other brakes. Very cool. Now, this isn't the only thing that you guys are are being innovative with uh, you brought a couple of other items too let's talk about the uh i want to talk about this this digi trigger thing here what's it called 
Well, this is an electronic trigger. The electronic trigger. I'm sorry. Let's so, talk about the electronic trigger. I think so there's already a digi trigger out there. Th there is, and and we we are actually working with that company on oh, okay. the military variant of this uh, for us. Okay. Um, so you know they're just right down the road from me in Murfreesboro. No, I didn't know that. Yep, they yeah. sure are. They're yeah. like in Columbia or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right on. Right on. Yep. So so this is the military variant. Um, they're they're working on the commercial side of things. We're working on the military side of things. Cool. We do actually have a lower receiver that is tailored to that uh, that commercial um, digital trigger. Okay. Um, it, it, it has some kind of unique milling to it that allows uh, some additional support and things like that. So the way the system works is on the military type. So you're working out of the receiver when you roll up into your normal um, single shot or, mm -hmm. or, uh, or into your full auto. Okay. So you're working off spring brute, sear, uh, hammer, um, uh, that whole full auto group up yep. there. Now, in the in the what we call digital mode, mm -hmm. digital mode, we're we're not disactivating what's going on in the receiver. We're actually overriding what's going on in the receiver. So we still have the four and a half pound sear mm -hmm. on the inside, and we're activating that electronically through the grip. And we have some adjustability, flexibility um, with uh, this particular grip we have two shot burst three shot burst uh five rounds per second in full auto 10 rounds per second 15 rounds per second in full auto but that can be configured in, in a, a number of uh fashions so to speak sure and, yeah so it's just programming right so um it works this is still in development okay um, may i yeah absolutely so uh he's got this on a, an ar platform right now and uh <laughs> it's safe it's clear Nothing there. So I'm going to walk me through my operation. So I've got it turned down to digi digital mode. Okay. So you're going to default to a one-pound trigger pull, and it's going to be single stage. So go ahead and pull it and uh, let it let it okay. release. Okay. All right. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go to the back of the receiver, and I want you to push number two. Okay. So I'm going to the back of the grip. Yep. And the 2X. That's correct. All right. I push the 2X. Yep. Now, pull your trigger, command it, and release. Boom, boom. Release. Pull it again. Okay. That's the hammer hitting two times. Just That's like right. That. That's right. Now, on the side of the grip, push All right. three. All right. Hitting the three button. That's correct. Now, I'm going to pull the trigger. <laughs> I can feel the trigger. I feel the hammer hitting. Yeah, yeah. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the back. You'll notice there's an infinity sign on the back of the grip. Right. We're going to push that infinity sign. That matches the same infinity sign on our receiver for full auto. Okay? Okay. So do I flip the switch? No, you don't flip the switch. Okay. Now push, push. push five. All right. So you're going to be five rounds per second full auto. Did I hit the wrong button? No, you're right there on I'm it. Five going. rounds per second. Okay, five rounds per yeah. second. Got it. Yeah, nice. full auto. All right, so now go to 10. All right. Pull well, your trigger and hold it. I'm going to heat it up a little bit now. Heat it up now. Hit the dirt. Oh, yeah. She's running Press down. Press and fire. Overwhelming. Get down, boys. That's right. Now go to 15. Now 15. Yeah, that's a donkey show right there. Now I'm going to just lay it down. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Now if I put that brake on here. That's right. I'm rocking and rolling. I'm That's actually, right. I'm actually getting some accuracy out of that. That's correct. Instead you are. of just spraying and praying, that is awesome. You know, it's not a, it's not a waste of bullets when you're hitting everything you're aiming at. That's right. You exactly. Know. Get our uh, taxpayers' dollars maximized. Went back to three. That is awesome. Very cool. So, and I assume that once the the battery craps out on it, then it's going to default to my my normal trigger. That's correct. You have the mechanical backup of the single shot and the full auto uh, in the upper receiver group. So if your battery craps out. What's the battery life on this? About uh, 14,000 rounds. Okay, 14,000 rounds. And what kind of batteries are we using on this? It's a 9 volt, but we're going to be moving towards the CR123 battery Okay. Uh, in the near future. Again, oh, this but is... But with a 9 volt, I'm getting 14,000 rounds out of a 9 volt? That's right. Okay. I mean, that's pretty damn good, I would think. And nine volts are cheap, and they're easily replaceable. But they're not uniform. They're not. 
No. So the CR one two threes, uh, you expect to get the same life, maybe a little more life out of that, out of one of those, or we we have some very interesting things that we're going to try to do. Okay. To replenish that energy. Gotcha. That's good. So rechargeable, dual fuel, maybe kind of thing. There we go. All there right. We go. I like it. Yeah, dual fuel. Yeah. yeah. You may have the name for it right there. Okay. Well, I think it's being used. But. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. I just want to say there's a lot of innovation coming from these good old boys from Macon, Georgia. Hell yeah. And, and, you know, uh, changing <coughs> Southern the, ingenuity, changing baby. Changing the firearm industry from, from the great Southland of America. There you go. Nothing better, in my opinion. I'm just a boy from Florida who was invited along to, to live this dream and be, and stand along these guys and sit and watch what they've done makes me super proud well you're doing a good job i mean you you caught our attention so yeah well we we, listen and another thing this show is amazing and and to be able to follow the guests that you've had on here we feel very honored well very cool man you have included us in this show it's a big show i know everybody would want well again uh, again it's our lead heads that reach out to me and make me aware of all these awesome products that you know i'm not able to keep up with everything and everybody so big thanks to our good buddy jerry black for thank thank you jerry introducing uh, you and i jeff jerry introduced me to uh talking lead well over a year ago and so I, i've been a fan myself well cool so, i appreciate uh, so that so you're a lead head i'm a lead head so this is uh adding to living the dream this week for me so i appreciate being here no oh, absolutely and, uh, and, and now we're not done week. but wait there's we're not, more we're not done yet Uh-oh, so let's more. let's talk about the uh the 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 thing so you you lead heads are very familiar with this especially you home builders uh you may get a, an upper from somewhere and a lower from, from another company uh and you get that wiggle you know They've come up with a solution for that, so let's let's talk about that real quick. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a very bold statement. All right, let's hear it. And I can back this up. I have the absolute world's tightest receivers. Okay. This is true. There you go. So you can go through this place today. You can grab every AR here, and you can, there'll be some motion. You can hear that. Right, he's holding up. He's holding That's up. Right. There's a little motion. Your typical, yeah. That's right. So this is a, a mill spec Colt upper, upper lower build there. That's right, and then our our lower is underneath it, with our cam lock technology. So so you make your own lowers? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got. We a pat- need to talk. We've got a patent on this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so um. We should talk. Yeah. We should. We should talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We should talk. Right. Yeah. I I like the, to build yeah. AR. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You know. I'll give you the best receiver money can buy. Sweet. And the tightest. And the tightest. And the tightest. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So how are you making this this possible? All right. So uh, either we're using an AccuEdge and we're driving them apart, or we're using the jack screw and we're still driving them apart. we got to leave them loose enough to where we can get the pin right. out. So you're talking about what's on the market today, what That's people right. are, are using. That's yeah. right. Or we're milling them so tight that we have to drive the pin in with a punch or a little hammer, and then we got to drive it back out. Right. Inconvenience. So what we've done is we've come up with cam lock technology. It uses a camshaft and a block and engages the rear takedown pin. Now, I'm not going to give all the secrets of it. Okay. But we are pulling not only down but back. So we're loading the front pin, front takedown pin, and the rear takedown pin. I'll show you how this works in a minute. Okay. So if we just pull straight down on the back, then our front stands to wobble up and down a little bit. Right. So... What we're doing is we're preloading everything. We're pulling everything into alignment, and we're doing it with this device here. So we have a little motion here, and we roll that baby up. Motion goes away, and pretty straightforward here. That's how it happens. All right. So can I take a picture of that? Is that yeah. proprietary? Yeah, I think so. What? Yeah, because that. We have a patent on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me get my camera working here. So you keep talking as I'm... All right, so what this is, this is a block, and this block engages this pin. You notice this pin's a little loose right right here? All right, well, there's a reason for that. That pin has to move up and down in order for this thing to be able to pull the upper into the lower. So um, we pull this in, and I'm going to put this pin in there, and I'm going to show this thing in operation. You see it go down and back? And it goes down and back. And... So nice. It has a camshaft. It's fully adjustable. You see the screw in the rear here. Right. So my old eyes here. And, and the the benefit is when you when you engage the cam lock, 
it, it basically locks the upper and the lower together and you eliminate all the shake and you have a much more stable, accurate uh, gun. And, and this is adjustable to, to take care of different uh, tolerances that Absolutely. you may encounter. Absolutely. It, it works with any and mil it just, spec upper. And it just drops in right behind your trigger there. That's correct. Well, it does. It's proprietary to our lower. Okay. So there's a there's some secret sauce in that uh -huh. that allows that to be able to happen. Okay. Now, so, will I be able to use this in other lowers? No. Okay. So there you go. Maybe. You would have to do extensive milling. Okay. You have to do some because because of that that area back there. That's correct. For it to fit into it. That's correct. Now, for you home builders out there, you know, I mean, it, it could be possible, but could. And you, this feels very light too. It feels like your your lowers are. It is. So we took light. we took the, uh, the we took the unnecessary weight out where where we could, and we left the structural integrity where it's needed most. Okay. So um, now, uh, do your all your lowers come with this? Yeah. So we have this lower. We have the digital trigger lower, and we have a standard lower. Uh huh. But uh, every cam lock lower will come with that. So, okay. So you can get it with or without the cam lock. That is correct. And are you doing your uppers also? We are currently working on that. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the magwell that you got going here on your lowers too. It's a different kind of cut, V cut, a little right. flared a little bit there. Uh, nice. And uh, these are milled? They are. Okay. You got they milled, are. milled yep. lowers. 7075T6. And uh, I just want you to play with this for a minute here. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back together. Okay. And you want to video this? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little video of you demonstrating here. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, it's not live. We're just gonna video it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna I'm going. Go. Wait a minute. Go. All right, so we're gonna close this baby up. We're gonna drop this pin. We're gonna roll this baby up, and we're gonna lock that upper into that lower, no problem. We're gonna release it. We're gonna reach over here. We're gonna pull this pin out, and we're gonna do that. So. Pop in the top. Pop in the top. So, if this is adjusted properly, it'll take about 300 pounds of pressure to remove that pin. So, if you tried to pull that pin right now, you could not do that. Okay. So, it locks in there good once it's locked. It does. And there's absolutely no movement, no light in between the upper and the lower. We're pulling everything down and back and uh, essentially making it like a bolt-action rifle. We're doing in the AR world... What, Pop that top again. ...what Defiance is doing in, in the... Uh, uh, the bolt action lower. And then show me the, let's see the inner. So this is proprietary to their lower. That's correct. U.S. Arms Company. And it's called the? Cam lock. Cam lock system. You'll never get a tighter fit between your lower and your upper. Guaranteed world's tightest receiver. I know it's a bold statement, but it is a fact. That's bold, baby. That's <laughs> bold. Cool. Very good, guys. This is some good stuff. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad our lead heads are looking after one another and uh, bringing the lead education to the lead head brigade. This is awesome, man. James, thank you so much. Eric, I got. Yep, absolutely. James, Eric. Man, again, it's an honor. Yes. Thank, thank you, brother, for accepting us and having us here. And We're shaking hands. We're just shaking hands here. Uh, but yeah, so as you guys are uh, coming out with more things and uh, improvements, changes, make sure you get in touch with me. We'll introduce it to the Leadhead Brigade. Keep everybody uh, up to date on, uh, you know, all the greatest innovations coming from uh, U.S. Arms Company. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, yeah. guys. We got more coming from the 2020 Shot Show directly from the official lead quarters here at Buck Knives Booth, and we're making it comfortable here, Justin. Right? What are we wearing? Twisted X. We're wearing our Twisted X boots and uh, slip-ons. Nice. They are the most comfortable boots that you can have. Twisted X, check them out. The official footwear of Talking Lead. Nice. No, I haven't. I did, that was my first uh, exposure, exposure to, it. to it. Was uh, yeah. I happened to walk by their booth and he pulled me in. He showed me that the buttons on the grip of the electronic yeah. trigger and yeah, it's pretty wild. And then when he said there's manual backup, I'm like, okay, you answered the only question I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, because it's default goes back to your, you know, your regular trigger. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the, but I, I like the different fire modes that it had. So yeah, you got to go see that. You can he's do. A, made, he's the biggest gun guy in our whole company. Okay, yeah, you got to well, check those guys out. Yeah. Might have some competition a little bit with, with people, Bill. No. He's pretty big. No, nah, yeah. yeah, competition's good. Competition's good, yep. right? We are at the 2020 Shot Show, Leadheads. Uh, the official 
lead quarters here at Buck Knives booth. And uh, we've been having a great week. This is the day five, six, seven, eight, twelve of SHOT Show. Something like that. Last day. We're wrapping it up today. Uh, but uh, had the opportunity to work with these guys uh, earlier last year. And uh, they really hooked you lead heads up with some of their dual fuel flashlights. And uh, I know that uh, the winners of those appreciated them. And then you lead heads that went and bought them. I know you're loving them. I'm still loving mine. I've got... Uh, the, the little small is that the Garda? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what I'm traveling with uh, this week. So I've got the Garda with me, uh, and the uh, the bigger one, the Triad. The Triad. Uh, I think you changed the name of it. Yeah, uh, Triad XTDF. The XT, the yeah, the XTDF uh, is my uh, my duty light, you know, mm-hmm. at, at home and doing the heavy duty work. But mm-hmm. absolutely loving those. But great. Uh, you guys have some new offerings here that you're unveiling at SHOT Show. And uh, joining me, I don't I guess to introduce you, Michael Hess, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no stranger to the Talking Lead podcast. Good to be back. With ASP. And you brought uh, Justin with you. I did. And Justin, introduce yourself to the Leadheads. Sure. Uh, yeah, Justin Marquardt with ASP. Um, I'm in charge of production here. And uh, just kind of make sure, you know, everything going through um, Kind of, we rely on a lot of feedback from the industry and, and people that we work with. And I bet you get a lot of feedback from this show, so it's probably very beneficial to you because you're getting face-to-face time with your end users, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's really valuable here just to uh, be able to talk to the people who actually have our products on their belts every day, day in and day out, and you right. just can't get insights like that. Yeah. So yeah. Just, Justin's just taken over our uh, vice president of manufacturing after 30 years, just retired. And Justin oh. was just promoted to vice president of manufacturing, and congratulations! Has oh, thank you. Probably yeah, the man. hardest job in the company. Okay, uh, so he's he's, he's got. Like, his, Wait a minute now. <laughs> he's got he's got his hands full. Well, you know we're we make a lot of stuff. Um, you do. There's, there's no margin for error in the people we sell to. Um, so you know the cost of failure is high uh, in the law enforcement business. So That's right. it's a lot of pressure, and we're constantly developing new stuff. So. So that um, says a lot for you to be promoted up into that that position, Justin. Yeah, it's so. a big deal. Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah, big it's, deal. It's, it's interesting. It's tough, but you know, I'm, I'm very um, looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be kind of a challenge in the next, uh, you know, transitional period here. But you got this, man. You He's got, got this. It. We know yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, I, well, I have a lot of support too. I mean, everyone in the company. It's, it's, not, it's really just a big team. It really is. I mean, everyone is willing to help out whenever we can. We run off ideas off each other, and it's a great environment. Right. It seems like it. Seems like you guys are, are pretty tight knit to be a, you know big company like you are well we're 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 very mission focused to a fault um you know i like to say to people one of the things i'm most proud of at asp or asp is that what you hear us say outside the company is the same stuff we say behind closed doors you know they say integrity is what you do when nobody's watching that's you guys when we're we like to think so you know when we're the same things we say to people at a trade show or out when we do training about our mission focus on officer safety and things when we're behind closed doors designing products we challenge each other and say, well, how does this product make an officer safer? And mm-hmm. if you can't answer that, we're probably not going to come out with the product. Right. And, and that integrity uh, shows also through the, the courses and, and training that you guys offer your end users. Yep. You know, tuition free training. Yeah. Right. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Not only tuition free training, but we give them the product for free. So yeah, <laughs> and we're in the business of selling products. But, you know, we we don't think there's too much we can do for cops. So. Yeah. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing for our LE out there. Thank you. Thanks. So let's talk about your new products that you're uh, unveiling here at SHOT Show. Yeah, so we, you know, our three main product categories are tactical batons, uh, restraints or handcuffs, uh, and tactical flashlights. And we have other stuff too, pepper spray and training gear, but we're, our three big ones are batons, uh, cuffs, and lights. And we every SHOT Show we generally have introductions in all of those categories, and this year is no exception. Uh, in the baton category, which is what we're famous for, our, our bread and butter, uh, we have a new line of batons called the uh, Talon Infinity Baton. Right. It's the most precise baton we've a uh, push button activated baton we've ever made. Fastest, most durable, um, all new materials design. We've reduced moving parts. It's self lubricating, so no maintenance. Um, it's a really how is it self lubricating? Uh, so one of one of the um, I won't say it's a complaint, but one of the challenges we were given by police and trainers that we work with over the f- last few years of selling push button activated batons, which for those who know, uh, as compared to friction lock batons, which is the traditional extend the baton and then find a place to bang it on the ground to close it. With push button, you don't have to do that last part. You just push a button and then 
squeeze it closed either in your hand or right in your scabbard. You don't smash it on the ground. So one of the bits of feedback we've gotten in the years of doing uh, talon batons is that officers would rather not have a baton be a maintenance item for them. Right. You know, they may or may not clean their guns and lubricate them. Yeah. They don't want to take their baton out of the scabbard and lubricate it. They just want to know that it, it works. Yeah. If they're not cleaning their gun, they're not cleaning their baton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, so we worked on a, a mechanical system, and more importantly, and, and Justin maybe can speak to this as the manufacturing guy, a combination of materials that allows the baton to operate in most environments and circumstances without ever needing supplemental lubrication. So maybe you can talk about the materials that are in it. Sure. So, yeah, we moved from um, basically within the, the shafts, you know, there, there's some moving parts in there. And instead of a, a buninitrile, sort of a traditional O-ring, as, as you would think, that requires some you know, silicone lubrication, we've switched to a polymer that is self-lubricating. So uh, the polymer will slide over to the metal easily without having that extra need for oil and lubrication. I mean, a little bit doesn't hurt, and it, sure. it does actually protect the integrity of the metal. I mean, same with oiling your guns. Right. You know, that, that oil just kind of adds that extra layer. But you're not going to run into any bind-ups or, or problems uh, manipulating the shafts if you don't have that oil readily available. Gotcha. So it drastically reduces that need. Yeah. yeah. So so the, these batons are, they're just, they're super snappy. You know, they... they deploy out just really with really tight tolerances really really nice operation they close just as easily and um, we spent about a year developing them um, just Justin was also our uh, our crash test dummy uh -oh. he spent um, <laughs> got a few bu bruises uh, well he wasn't on the receiving end but he was uh, <laughs> he was assigned to hit the heavy bag with the batons ah, so um, so sore shoulder and wrist and yeah. yeah, I've got I've got several thousand open strike closes under my belt and uh. So we open the baton, time. strike it on the bag, close it, open it, strike it, close it. I think I don't know what was the record of what you did in a row, like three hundred in, in a row. Oh my well, gosh! At, at one in one set. Yeah. Um, I did a thousand broken into like two, three pieces. So, but yeah, w within the course of an hour, I did a thousand. Just wow. So we, and it's not just us testing it. There's agencies testing it and trainers testing it and. Yeah. What we found, having gone through this this uh, torture test process, was that uh, we feel so strongly about the baton that we created a new warranty, which is actually where the Infinity name comes from. Um, for this baton, uh, our warranty is if it breaks, if you run your truck over it, if you feel like breaking it, if you <laughs> snap it over somebody's head, All right. drop it off a building, doesn't matter, whoever breaks it, however they break it, why ever it breaks, we're gonna fix it, replace it forever. You don't need to know why, it's just broke, uh, you send it back, and you're gonna get, get it in. <laughs> we'll see if it's a good business decision, but <laughs> you know, you gotta put your money where your mouth is in this business. That's and, right. Uh, so we have a little laser engraved infinity um, in, uh, indicia, I guess, on the shaft of the baton, nice. and if it's got that, it, that uh, logo, then it's guaranteed forever for any reason, whoever owns it, whatever. I mean, so you can't beat that. Cannot. I mean, yeah. That's backing your product up right there. Yes, correct. So, so that's um, that's our main baton introduction. We have a we have a new scabbard as well, uh, in the baton category. Mm -hmm. uh, in restraints, our our big push as a company is into the corrections market. Um, you know, we're as I said a moment ago, uh, everything we do is fo is focused on officer safety. Sure. Uh, how they can perform their jobs more safely, more efficiently, go home safer at night. Just like everybody who's in the law enforcement business, that's the inevitable that's goal. That's their goal, yeah. Um, so we, we found that with uh, corrections, which is not a space that we had been very active in, uh, that there were big opportunities there to apply some of the ASP thinking mm -hmm. uh, into the way subjects are restrained in the process of being transported to and from corrections facilities, to court, in airplanes at times, buses, uh, and we developed a system, without getting too much in the weeds, that integrates with a very advanced handcuff and allows that handcuff to be sort of the central hub of a system for immobilizing arms, uh, waist restraint, mm -hmm. and a leg system in a very modular way that can be attached and detached without ever uncuffing uh, the subject. Oh, so wow, okay. from an officer safety standpoint, we've got a, somebody who's al always restrained, no keys present in the process of locking it, uh, of locking it I should say. Yeah. Um, and the ability to, to add and remove restraint components without compromising officer safety. And frankly, uh, as odd as it may sound, a much more comfortable 
system for the person who's lucky enough to wear it. Sure. Um, it allows them to sit in court. It allows them to sign documents, mm -hmm. uh, use the restroom. Travel. Travel. Eat. Um, eat, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so, it, you know, we've found in our handcuff business, you know, we're, I think it's safe to say we're the fastest growing um, brand in the handcuff business, even though we've been at it for a while. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that more departments, including most recently uh, Seattle PD, have switched to our cuffs is the word comfort sounds funny, but mm -hmm. it's beyond comfort. Um, uh, subject safety, the people who are in the custody of, of law enforcement, uh, is a common source of uh, common liability issue. So right, yeah. handcuff related injuries, at a minimum, it's paperwork, which nobody likes. Mm -hmm. At a maximum, it's a lawsuit. Sure. So if you can create restraint systems that m minimize the risk of hurting somebody or even making them a little uncomfortable, yeah. um, that's important. Uh, that Absolutely. Go, that yeah. comes back to the officer's life as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's our, our big restraint push is the transport system. And then for our flashlight category, our big introduction uh, this year is the uh, Spectrum. Spectral. Okay, I like the, that name. the same form factor as the XTDF that you have. Mm -hmm. Same programmability, but instead of the uh, high-low strobe that you have in yours, yep. it's got high-low strobe, red, green, and blue. Ooh, nice. Uh, everything yeah. else about it is the same. It uses that double tap feature, so that's what you're programming in. Okay. Guess I should have brought one, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, we like props here. Well, you know, you know it's audio. You know that. Here, look at this. But I like props. Yeah. I can talk. That, that brings questions up that I can ask about, but I, that's okay. I'll bring it by when I've, we're done. I've got it in my head right now. So, so how do you get to the colored? You want to talk about the programming? Sure. Yeah. So if you have that XTDF, which sounds like you're familiar with, you've got a, a bezel that unscrews, and mm -hmm. then our charging port is in there, uh, indicator light, and then we've added the button to switch between all the modes. So it's very similar to the XT, and we've got a couple lights coming out mm -hmm. or, or in existence that use a small uh, concealable button inside to set or program whatever you want for your second setting. And so that's the same button that uses that functionality. So you can, okay. instead of just the... So the color stroke. lights is up uh, where you do the charging. Yeah. You, you screw it up and push up, and then you hit whatever color you want there, and then you still have the same functionality with the... Exactly. Strobe. So you can exactly. with green or red or... You so go bright, you go dim with the green or red, or it just yeah. okay. So, is it a bulb or is it a lens that's four LEDs? Okay, it's LEDs. Yep. So we actually uh, we use all you know Cree LEDs in our lights, and we went to Cree with an idea and worked with them on this, and they actually came back with a LED, presented it to us, and thought, well, this is this is going to fit your needs. So we, we do that a lot where we have a light, we go to them, and then match their product to whatever I need is. So it's actually a, a four section LED chip. Nice. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. So with flashlights, one of our operating philosophies is that a flashlight should always default to bright white for officer safety because mm -hmm. you don't want to go into a dark alley or be clearing a room and turn on your flashlight and find out you left it on strobe mm -hmm. or, or low beam. You just want light. Right. So every light we make, the first time you push the button, it's bright white. You program in the secondary mode. So once you Say, okay, I want my secondary mode to be red for night vision preservation. Mm -hmm. You lock that in by closing the bezel, and then that's always accessible by that double tap feature. Ah, okay. So nice. and if you want to use blue for you know blood tracking or, or whatever, yeah. whatever, you can program that one in. But the first time you touch the button, it's always going to be bright white. Nice. So and then actually, you know, doing, uh, as Justin said, we, we developed this four LED chip that's in there, but we learned that one of the downsides of having four emitters, which is LEDs, mm -hmm. on on a wafer, so to speak, is that because they're they're not all in the middle, because they're not all in the middle of the chip, you're going to have offset light when you're in certain colors. Mm -hmm. So you'd almost see when we first tested it, kind of a crescent of red light, but it wasn't a complete circle of red light. It had kind of a dark area in the middle. Yeah. So we figured out a way to create a diffuse a diffuser in the lens that makes that uh, that fills out that space so in all four colors of our light you see a full center beam with no dark spot in the middle without compromising nice. too much brightness um, so you have intelligent flashlights we like to think oh well we're intelligent flashlight people intelligent <laughs> flashlight people <laughs> but um intelligent people behind the flashlights we yeah. hope so and the, and the big news the, of this light um is that we have uh hit a new price point we're not 
we're not a price-oriented company, and I don't say that because we don't think price is important, but we tend to make the best products we can, and they are what they are, honestly. Sure. We're, we're not willing to look for ways to make products cheaper at the expense of the product. Right. So typically, we've been at the high end of the flashlight market, not the highest. There are some that are more expensive, but we are... Um, we're an investment grade flashlight. Sure. And so our duty lights have typically been $100 plus, $150. Mm -hmm. uh, the XTDF that we gave to your listeners, uh, to a few of them, that was around $170 kit. Right, yeah, very um, nice kit. Yeah. The, with the, uh, the Spectrum, we are, as a test to see if we can make the flashlight more accessible to more people, um, we've put a $79 retail on it. What? That's not because our margins are fat, because they're not. It's just that we're... <laughs> We're taking a risk, and we're going to see if a if a crazy good price point will get us get our flashlights out to more people. And then if it does, I would hope so. My gosh! Yeah. So it's it, I, I hate to use the term loss leader because that's not a normal way that we do business, yeah. but it kind of is. We're yeah. not. That's we're, crazy. We're, I mean, you've added more functionality to the to the flashlight, more tellings to the flashlight, and you dropped the price. Yeah, and and we. I'm scratching my head. Over here. Well, so we legit <laughs> we legit won't make any money on the first run of lights, yeah. and, and I'm uh, and I'm not I'm not even a penny. We will not make a penny on them, but our hope is that if it works and the, and we reach a broader market, we can then get the efficiencies that come with higher volume, right? And be able to preserve that price in the long run. So when are these going to be out? Are they out now? Um, available? They're, we're just finishing manufacturing, so okay. they're trickling in. Justin, you, when do you think we'll have full stock? Um, well, we're, we're looking at a few weeks out. Yeah. You know, so we've got the first uh, production pieces in. So we're okay. past the prototype stage. We're, we are in production stage, um, but you know, like anything, the, the it's kind of a slow trickle and then it increases. So right. um, within a few weeks, we should have a pretty good stock on okay. these. So there you go, Leadheads. You better jump to their website and uh, keep an eye out because you're going to want to sap these up at that price. I mean, that, like you said, I mean, the ones that we were giving away and it was a whole kit. Buck 70. 170, yeah. getting an even better, well, uh, a more feature rich flashlight. You know, I said buck 70 because we're sitting in the buck booth. Uh, the buck booth. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go. Uh, like I mean, you can't before. beat you can't beat that price. That's, that's we crazy. hope so. We that's really crazy. hope so. Yeah. You know, we want we we want to get it in the hands of more people. We are a, we are a niche company. We we only focus on law enforcement, but flashlights are unique in that it's the one product we have that anybody can buy, and that anybody can and should have a good flashlight. Right. So we're hoping that this will get us out there. Okay. I'm sure it will. I Thanks. mean, we're going to spread the word here, so I know a lot of the leadheads will be in line for that. So. Well, we'll we'll get one on the way out to you when we get home, and uh, you can play around with it. Oh, I'd love to, yeah. 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 I, I love my XTD. I mean, it's my go-to. So Appreciate that. It's uh, a pretty popular one. A lot of people like that one. It's a, yeah. You send me that one, and then I'll send that one, and uh, I'll pay it forward with the with the other one. All right. So, absolutely. All right, cool. So any anything else new and exciting? I mean, that's that's pretty good stuff right there. Oh, Justin's favorite project, Drop, drop Mag Red Guns. Oh, yeah, that's, ah, that's a, let's that's talk a big about one. That. So uh, people are probably pretty familiar with our normal red gun lineup. They're inert um, training firearms. Uh, difference is we have full steel reinforcement in all of the guns. It's a polymer that we've uh, developed specifically for these guns. In fact, over the last couple of years, we've upgraded that polymer again. So mm -hmm. the current lineup has a, a really vibrant red color, really nice. stands out in training. Um, now we've moved into sort of um, enhanced capabilities. So they have drop magazines now. Oh, okay. And, and we've got two models out. We've got the Beretta 92 and we have the HK416. So you can practice reloads. Exactly. Nice. Yep. Do yep. manipulation. This was at the request of a a major armed force in Europe that wanted many, many thousands of these to give to, what, paratroopers and some yeah. other people? So that's why, if you're agencies. wondering why it seems strange that we started with a, maybe the Beretta and a, and a HK416, and both, both great guns, but yeah. um, the reason is because those were specifically requested by uh, this army. Sure. Um, we're also work, we're, we're working on some other Working on a few more models, <laughs> so uh, looking into it. some SIG versions and a few other uh, large law enforcement handguns. That's, right. You know, one of the great things about being here at SHOT Show is you can walk around and ask everyone around, hey, what kind of gun are you using? What kind of gun is your agency using? Right. So a lot of great intel. So, so Plus, so you've got those manufacturers here, too. Yep. You've got the, the SIGs yeah. and the it, Glocks and the Berettas. And it's funny, you know, a red gun, it's a solid plastic gun that's used for safe training. The The... 
process of designing and building a red gun, especially the uh, the AR platform mm -hmm. that'll accept and drop a magazine, we were half jokingly internally we were saying it would be easier and cheaper to just buy the guns and spray paint them red. <laughs> it, it was not easy. I um, can imagine. And yeah. it was a real pet project of Justin. So now we've got a uh, we've got in our booth a an AR that has a magazine that drops out so you can do manipulations and we've got a pistol with a magazine and it, it it sounds like a little thing red plastic gun but boy it was a big deal yeah. we're, we're excited about it I and mean, we're um we well, hope for that these, for these large agencies for their training i mean those things are you know they're priceless yep yeah. so um yeah so that's that yeah <clears throat> another piece that i'll say a thank you to hex because they actually worked with us to develop a custom magazine so it's a custom color um it's a it's an inert magazine, so they're able to pack it with a certain kind of filling, and they, right. they pin the base can't plate. can't put bullets in it. Right. So it, it's a safe magazine, but at the same time, if you push on the follower, it kind of has a little bit of give. So if you're using it in a real AR, uh, you know, up against a closed bolt, still it's able to be seated. Right. But it's a high-vis red, just like all of our training gear, which you see that, and you immediately know this is training. Yeah. And it is just pretty cool that they were able to develop that. Uh, especially for us. Cool. Uh, that was a uh, good shout mag. out. I'm a hex mag user as a, as a shooter, yep. and uh, I've got a few they, hex mags. Yeah, they they uh, they deserve the shout out. They really worked with us on this. Um, well, we'll see we'll where these uh, drop mags go, but it, I think there's a lot of potential here for some growth. Absolutely. So you brought me a little gift here. I want to open it. I've been waiting this whole time to the unboxing. The unboxing. I'm going to do an unboxing here. I'm going to get my that microphone that down. Smells delicious. You know one thing. I know. Chacho has some amazing <laughs> food. <laughs> You have those the breweries. French fries at I mean, Shot Show. Vegas. I mean, just Vegas food. So we have a tradition amazing. in our booth. So our booth, you know, we have a conference rooms in our booth. So we have enclosed areas. Right. We have a tradition that we buy French fries at the concession stand by the ton. By the ton. Because <laughs> they are the best freaking French fries in the world at a at a trade show. And the weird part is a diet coke here costs five dollars and fifteen cents, which I think is very reasonable. But French a fries diet only, coke. Yes, sir. Five dollars. Yep. Then that's reasonable. I'm joking. Okay, it's not reasonable. reasonable. Thank you. He's from New York. But I'm still. from New York, but the the but the fries are like two fifty. It's such a that's a messed deal. up economy. That's a deal. So we 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 buy cases and cases of the fries. They're they're incredible. You take them home with you? We no, we eat them cold all day in the booth. We don't care. Oh, there you go. You got your dot light. Look at this. So this is the dot light. What is kind it, of looms do I have here? 130 lumens, which brighten? Is it bright? Blinding you? Not too long ago, 130 lumens would have probably made it the brightest tactical light on the market. Uh, it's rechargeable. <laughs> that is bright. Wow. Rechargeable keychain size tactical light. You can unscrew the bezel and you'll find a micro USB charging port in there. Undo the bezel? Yes, sir. Just unscrew it all the way. Okay. Unscrew, 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 unscrew. For you listeners Look out at there, that. he's unscrewing the bezel. I, I take, I'm taking the bezel off, and then there's yeah. the port for micro uh, USB. So any micro USB, we charging. give you a little adapter to charge it, but you could charge it with any phone, you know, like a Android phone cord or yeah. Bluetooth charging cord. That um, is awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, this is so tiny. It is. Is this your smallest one to yeah. date? It is, yeah. Yeah. and it is and brightest, smallest and brightest. I mean, it's, it's like the size, of, like two thumbnails. As the young people say, it's bright AF. Bright AF. <laughs> Alpha Foxtrot. Alpha Foxtrot, yep. And what is the name of this one? The Dot. Dot. Yep. I like that. Thank you. You bet. Our pleasure. So are these new, the Dots? Uh, they're not that new. Um, they've been out for but, a minute? Uh, they've been out for a minute, and um, but they seem to be the, the thing that people love getting the most as a gift, so uh, we figured that would be a good one. It's going to be my new bag light, so I've got this one. I like that bag. I've got this one, still. Yeah. This is oh, one of yours. Sapphire. The sapphire. Yep. The sapphire. Yeah. So that was our very first. So, uh, that the sapphire was our very first LED light. Uh -huh. Twenty five years ago, maybe. It's been a long. Pretty time. close. And now for a LED lighting really didn't exist before that, and the sapphire came out. It originally had a blue LED, which I think is how it got the name sapphire, because their white LEDs were very exotic back then. Right. Um, and and ASP sold millions and millions of sapphires um you could you know everything from department stores to catalogs to you name it because it was so novel at the time right and then the bottom fell out of the led market to where you know you can get a a clip on light for free at the grocery store practically <laughs> yeah pretty much and we yeah. don't we're not good at cheap so um we preserved the sapphire but we dramatically upgraded it made it 
uh, rechargeable, which it didn't used to be. Yeah. Um, had a dual mode switch, so, was, so we've got momentary constant on. Um, it's bright. I mean, for a little tiny light, it's oh, it's 20, yeah, super bright. Twenty lumens. LED. It'll it'll light up a little room. Twenty yeah, or thirty lumens. Yeah. For the size, it's pretty bright. It's perfect it's for the dirty. bag too. It lights up your bag when you're trying to get your stuff. You know. Just well, psh. that's the thing about those small lights is you really don't want a ton of light because a lot of times you're searching in a dark area in your backpack, in your car, or something like that. You don't right. want to be blinded. Yep. So it's it's really perfect. Yeah. Very cool. Michael, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for having us. Updating us on the latest and greatest with uh, ASP USA. That's your website, ASPUSA.com. ASP dash. dash USA. Is it dash? Is it the dash? Unf- unfortunately, yeah. there's a dash in there. But okay. Yeah. Is there a, is there a, another ASP USA that? Um, I don't know who the other one is. Mm-hmm. I didn't, actually, I must have looked at one point or another, but that, that right. happened a long time ago. Before. ASP dash USA. Yep. Uh, you let heads know where that is, and I guess our code's not not valid anymore, right? Is it not? I don't know. I just, well, I we'll asking. make it valid again. Um, We're here. Okay. You remember what it is? Uh, I think it was Leadhead, wasn't it? I've got it written down at home. I'll look at it and see what it is. But I will find I'll out. Start what it, giving it out again. I will find out what it is on our. And by the time I get to my booth, I will have it reactivated. Okay, that sounds great. So whatever the Leadheads have, they can use again. Okay, sounds what? good. What I saw that. Did you see that? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> you, just yeah, find out. Yeah, please. That's yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we'll get the lead head uh, discount activated again if it's not. Awesome. And love uh, we, we love the lead heads, and we appreciate your having us around. Absolutely. And, we, again, we appreciate everything that you guys are do- doing for not only our, our listeners, but, of course, the, our law enforcement military uh, men and women out there, too. So thank you. Great. Cool. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank guys, you we'll much. be back with more at the 2020 SHOT Show from the official lead quarters here at Buck Knives. Buck 70. <laughs> <laughs> Buck 380. <laughs> now, I, I didn't take, unfortunately, I didn't take chemo. chemo. I probably wouldn't be here if I took chemo. It would have killed me. All right, so Frank, you're going to you're gonna have to get up on the mic. You can either hold it if you want to, pull it up to you, or just... Hello. Get yeah. up on the yeah. mic. It's directional, so you got to get up oh, on yeah. it. Oh, yeah. All right. And if you need more cord, we can give you more cord. No, there. I'm fine. You all good, dear? His yeah. voice carries. Just wait till he gets excited. No, no, no. My <laughs> voice, I don't know what's left of it. You've talked a lot this week. <laughs> way too fucking much. It's the last day everybody's voices are going. So, uh, Leadheads, we are at the 2020 SHOT Show, in case you didn't know by now, with all the uh, interviews that we've been popping out these last four days. We are at the last day of SHOT Show, and uh, we're bringing it to you live from the uh, Talking Lead Lead Quarters here at Buck Knives. And we just had a revolving door like like usual. And uh, our good buddy Paul Markle has sat down to, to join us. Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! And uh, we had Paul on a few episodes back talking about his new book, Fighting Solves Everything, and how he kicked the shit out of cancer, and uh, how you can do the same, and not just uh, cancer, but with uh, any of the adversities that you're dealing with in life. That's right. Anything that... that uh you know, we don't always get to select the cards that we're dealt. Sometimes you just got to deal with it. So if you're going to be alive, live. There you go. There you go. And Paul does it well, ladies and gentlemen. And fighting solves everything. <laughs> so you, I was asking you uh, earlier, I said, I didn't think you were going to be here uh, at SHOT Show. And you said, I have to show proof of life. Yeah, that's right. I got to show proof of life. Because <laughs> you know how it is in the industry. People hear rumors. They're like, I heard you got sick. Yeah. You know, and you if, died. If, if, exactly. I thought you died. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like, if, if you don't show up, you know, you, you miss one shot show, and you come, and people are like, oh, what, what are you still doing? Are you still in business? You, right. Like, it's yeah. like you, you went out of business because you didn't show up at I, shot show. I am still in business. So. <laughs> so, also joining us today, we've got our good buddy and friend of the show, Mr. Keith Garcia. Marty, how are you, man? I'm doing good, buddy. You, you sobered up? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sobered up from last night. All yeah, right, yeah. I'm, t- I'm still on the way. I, I tied one on last night. <laughs> Thursday's my night to get out and just unwind. You know, I agree. Me too. So I'm a good boy. The you know the rest of the week, and then just kind of blow it out. But we didn't get too crazy last night. I'm glad to hear it because you know as you get older, it's a uh, hard to recover. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, I really hate the recovery process. So you know, I really I take it take it easier uh, on those evenings here at Shot Show. I actually have a voice today. I usually don't even have a voice on the last day. So. Uh, I'm doing good. Now, you've brought a friend with you. Why don't you uh, introduce uh, who you brought along with you? This is uh, Frank DeSoma. He's the owner and uh, president of POF USA. They make the almost awesome rifles that you're ever going to see. 
And they do make some really beautiful piece of hardware, yeah. Right, 308 and 223, and now they got a new 22 out. But uh, oh, okay. the tech that uh, that Frank has developed, um, it's the lightest 308s in the world. And uh, he's got a new one, the Rogue, out this year that you got to come by and see. Uh, in a 16-inch barrel, 5.9 pounds. What? Semi-automatic. Frank, welcome into the show, first off. Good morning. Uh, uh, talk about this 308 that's the weight of an AR-15. What, what's going on here? What have you done? We went to the races. American <laughs> muscle, buddy. <laughs> what do you do at the drag races? You get the lightest frame, and you put the biggest ass engine in it you can. Right. And hope you get the traction so you can crush your competition. And that's all awesome. we did was everyone's trying to make the AR-15 be everything and they're messing with cartridges all the time to try to make it be that battle rifle because the, the AR-15 M16 design is a great design that Stoner did Stoner so, good I like that and, and Eugene Stoner is the reason I exist with the opportunity of what we did and I think we've propelled his original design into the 21st century by giving it the best of everything. The AR-10's a wonderful gun, they're just heavy, and everyone's turned them into belly guns. Laying on their belly, it's a sniper gun. Right. Well, in the early 1900s, we had 30 out sixes and heavy guns, and they were battle guns, and they went out and guys were carrying them. Nowadays, 308, 762 is on your belly, and 5.56, five, or 300 blackout or 6.8 or whatever caliber is coming out they're trying to make the 5.56 become like a battle rifle have that punch right probably it's just not enough ass behind it yeah so what if you can make your AR-15 or M16 have the horsepower of the battle rifle why can't it be done well, I guess it has Why? been. Why? <laughs> I guess you just did it, right? Well, if you perceive things a certain way, then you you don't give up. Or if you say why and you actually try, you find a way. And eventually we did. So literally, by the end of the day, we created an AR-15 that shoots 7.62. In fact, you can take the bolt carrier assembly out of the gun with the charging handle, take out the 308 bolt and firing pin, put a 223 bolt and firing pin, throw it in your AR-15 shooting 5.56-223. Oh my gosh. This is the best part about shooting that gun, because when I go to the range and show people this, they can't, they can't even comprehend it when you describe it, because you have to right. see it. But he's making <clears throat> one bolt carrier group for both 5.56 and the 7x6 too. It's crazy, They're, and it's a lightweight bolt carrier. It's not some big thing that you're just going to oversize and have your 5.56 have a massive bolt carrier group. It's actually lightweight, cut down. Oh my gosh. And now all we're doing is putting a, a, changing the bolt, and the bolt and the firing pin. It's a little bit longer in the, in the 308. But it's the same carrier, and it's lightweight. And it, because of that, the less mass reciprocating in the gun, it shoots. In, in fact, last year I shot it a lot against the 223 divisions in, in three gun yeah. because it was it's it's not even fair to shoot heavy division. <laughs> uh, the weapon handling, uh, the the speed I can shoot it and drive the gun because it's the same size. Well, you're just uh, you know inhumanly fast anyway. Well, so. thank you, but you know it's uh, the, the the whole idea by shooting heavy divisions like okay this is apples apples, but once you go and shoot against a 223 and still succeed and win and uh, do well in these matches against the best guys in the country, it's uh, it shows really how good that gun is. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. The, yeah. the gas block they have uh, allows me to, to, to adjust you know, the flow of the, 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 the gases, and it, you can adjust it at any time. Over the, I've had one for two years. I can adjust it every week if I want to. It doesn't seize up. So I can get that gun running just the way I want it for my style, for my size. And uh, it's just been flawless. Wow. And a pleasure to shoot. So my so, mind is blown. So engineering's Frank. one thing, but you need someone to apply it. You can cut metal and do and think you've achieved something, but when someone has the skill set like Keith Garcia does and can manipulate, handle, and actually operate something, he's proving with pack timers and videos time and time again, which blows me away, that he's running and handling the gun no different than a 5.56, an AR-15 M16, right. but he has the firepower that we've always missed of the battle rifle cartridge. Our guns in law enforcement and the military, we've been overmatched since the 60s because the 7.62 has more ass yeah. than the 5.56. Five, 
we have the battle rifle in the same size. We will crush it. I, Frank, what do you think about this desire that for the U.S. Army to uh, to come up with the, the what? What are they calling it? They're calling it like the the infantry assault weapon. Have you seen that? The new, next generation. That, yeah, the next system. generation weapon system. What do you think about that? Well, I think we should always look for ways to improve upon things. I have no problem with that. But when I find out their guns are 10 pounds... Yeah, the, it's, they, a mon it's a monstrosity. And they want an 80,000 PSI. I don't have a problem with all those things, except someone needs to create better barrel material. Because how long is our barrels going to work when you start elevating with throat erosion and all that? Talk to the... The guy that shoots a lot, he knows how fast barrels get torn down when keep pumping ammo all year long. So, well, my experience with with military firearms is the the preventive maintenance on military firearms is is all on the end user. You know, clean it, lube it, clean it, lube it, clean it, lube it, clean it until the finish falls off. But as far as armor is concerned, I don't see a lot of preventive maintenance in the armory. Except what my experience as a military trainer was. Until you broke it, they weren't going to fix, replace, or do anything. Until it was actually broken and unfunctional. So, but as far as like just switching springs, pins, what, if you give them a gun that has to have continuous maintenance and continuous upkeep, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I knew. It has to be so, good from the gate. So I didn't have any perceived conceptions when I did it. We did the piston-driven AR back in 2004. We started backwards. I was a process engineer in aerospace. I wasn't a gun designer. I would claim that I am now. And my team, we, Patriot Ordnance Factory, and I think we're pretty good because we constantly ask why. Why can't you do something? Why can't this be done? If you believe that you can't do something, then you'll never try to achieve something different. Most of the products here, we're at the biggest gun show in the world, right? There's a hell of a lot of Me Too shit here. <laughs> a hell of a lot of Me Too shit. There, well, there's there's more there's more imitation than innovation. That I think that's and safe to say. While I'm breathing, we're going to continue to innovate. Because I'm only as good as my next best widget that we come out with. And the goal is always to improve upon what you started with and move forward, not backwards. It's not about a spreadsheet. All those spreadsheets and money come but that's the byproduct of creating and innovating. Absolutely. One of the things we're having in law enforcement these days, I've been a cop for 27 years and we do training and I see people coming out of the academy now, everybody's getting smaller. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. People are getting smaller, people are getting into the business. And if you start giving them heavier things like this next gen rifle, and I'm sure that the same things are happening in the military. They can't even throw a grenade. <laughs> they don't have enough muscle mass to throw a grenade, so and how, they're going to give yeah. them an 11 pound battle yeah. rifle. How are you going to drive that? How are you going to carry it? Every ounce, uh, every mile you walk, it's, it's kind of crazy. What Frank's done, now we can take this under six pound battle rifle in a 308 cartridge that you don't have to shoot somebody a whole lot to stop them. Uh, it's not going to you know, go through and disappear and they're not going to put a band-aid on it. Uh, and you can give them that and, and any size, you can carry that around. You can be effective with it. And that's, that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, I mean, in years past, when we won wars, we were shooting 30 caliber. So uh, that's kind of... Here's a little perspective, too. Sure. So Keith's been shooting the Revolution because that's where we broke the door open. It was 6.8 pounds. So for two years, he's been running with that. He runs a lightweight scope, a 1 to 8 or whatever. Well, the Rogue we just let out, and that's a $2,500 gun. Mm -hmm. We just came out with the Rogue. It's 5.9 pounds. We took almost a pound out of the gun. Just think, that scope that's on that six, the, the, the Revolution mm -hmm. is pretty much putting the whole gun with the scope the same weight. So you've made it, you've made it more powerful and lighter. And guess what? I love hunting. So let's not even talk about competition shooting, which is a wonderful thing. How many people are going hunting for every North American game with a 5.56? Not, not many. Not many. <laughs> How many can go with 7.62 by 51, 308? Yeah. So not only do we have a gun that can play tactical role, can do competition shooting. Hey, I don't have this boat anchor out there. I have a semi-automatic rifle 
shooting 308, and it's 5.9 pounds. How many bolt guns weigh less than six pounds? And then what's the price of it? Seventeen ninety nine. That's like one of your really nice perceived AR fifteens by a lot of manufacturers here. And that's the price point on this one. The yes. the new one, the Rogue. Is that where you're going? The Rogue. That's it's, amazing. It's kind of like our seven. I come. I'm a car. My mind's car blown, buff. man. I'm just I'm sitting a kind here of a all. car buff. I look at the Revolution. It's kind of like our Escalade Cadillac. Uh-huh. All the amenities, ambidextrous, everything. And there's Rich a lot Corinthian of engineering leather. features. But the Rogue is our Chevy Tahoe. It still has the same horsepower and punch, just not all the nice amenities. But it gets the job done, and that's what it's about. But I'm assuming that you are you can add the nice amenities if you want. It's it's fully exactly. upgradable and yes. accessorable. So Accessorizable, I guess is the word. So we're trying to be... We're trying to be more perceived because we won Rifle of the Year three years in a row with the Revolution, literally. Congratulations. Um, but the one resounding thing with reports we got back on from people that tested and gave reports like the Industry Choice Awards, which is a wonderful thing because it's not, not on the merit of how much you advertise, but it's on the merit of the product because you got people that are users in all aspects from professional shooters, law enforcement, military, a hunter. But anyways, the one thing, resounding thing that we kept hearing was where our guns are pricey. Mm-hmm. So now we came out with Rogue. Not only did we drop the weight because, hey, I don't have all the amenities. I dropped the weight and we lowered the price $700. <laughs> Is that still a piston gun? No, we went DI. Okay. On that. So is the, is the bloom off the rose on piston guns? Because, you know, 10 years ago, everyone was, can I say, creaming themselves? Sure. Uh, creaming themselves. <laughs> A little too late, right? Uh, uh, over, uh, over, well, piston guns. Here's what guns. I'll tell you. I know for sure. Tell me how many squad automatics are direct impingement and how many are piston driven. How many are? Harsh, bl- heavy, heavy use. Piston hands down. If you're in a shitty environment and you can't have the good tools to stay on top and maintain it and you're going to use it harsh and heavy, I wouldn't go into that battlefield without it. I'll even use shoot steel case wolf ammo. But an environment like me, I'm in a great society, I'm hunting or a competition shooter, I'm getting older and I'm certainly fat. I want like less weight to carry, less bullshit. Oh yeah. So you did this more for yourself than anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but the uh, the factory around there at POF is the Wolf steel case ammo. That's what they run all their testing with. Okay. And if, if you can run that in your guns, hundred percent, it's going to run anything because right. it's just you know the way it is. It gets a little dirty, a little faster. But uh, he even sent me a bunch to train with, and and the stuff just it just goes. Well, just has runs. anybody here in this at this table used any of the polymer cased ammo? Yes. Like, True velocity. Yeah. It works. Six five Creedmoor, seven six two by fifty one. I wish and hope that they come out. That's a possibility of moving the bar, because look at where the ammunition technology's been. We're doing pretty much the same shit for the last hundred and fifty years. We've improved mm-hmm. bullet technology, we've improved powder, but the case is the case. So uh, Frank took me out to some range that we'll, we can't disclose last year, and they had some true velocity ammo there. And, and it was wild because I, I would burn off, you know, 20 rounds real quick and then hold it in my hand. And that's, you know, where can you do that at? And you're transferring that, that less cool. heat to the chamber yeah, so you so could fight you could grab stay the gun. shooting a oh, little yeah? longer because the conductivity of heat being transferred. And, and, and when it falls on the back of your neck. Well, let's even talk or about in your that. glasses. Yeah. Has yeah, anyone yeah. ever had a stuck case in a semi-auto? Mm-hmm. Well, if, if, if you you're have in a gun it, you're fight, not shooting enough. Yeah, if you're in a gunfight, that becomes a club. You lose, right? The coefficient of drag with plastic is slick compared to brass. So there's another enhancement that would help to ensure... Not saying it would never happen, but I'm saying it's another item because you have a higher probability of eliminating that issue using plastic. And I'm not saying this 
the end all be all. Mm -hmm. But it's good that people are trying to innovate. They're trying to find new and better ways. And that's what makes it better. My God, we're almost going backwards. About time we start going back to the moon. 69, you're walking around with iPhones with more computing technology than we, we had back in 69 yeah. as a kid watching yeah. that. Watching us fly them they in a man and a rock. chalkboards, like from the ceiling to the floor, is what they had. <laughs> the yeah. chalkboards. I was actually having a, a conversation with a good friend of mine, a, year, a good friend of yours too, Zach Hall. Yeah. And exactly. he and he wrote he wrote a, read a book. He was telling me about. It. He said that the, the weird thing is is all the all the formulas and stuff were handwritten. You know, during the space program, and we actually lost a lot. So we have smartphones, and how much dumber are we now? Oh yeah, you're telling me, brother. When you could ask Siri, a chimpanzee, with Apple, a chimpanzee anything can poke about shiny history, buttons, right? You know? And we'll give up our freedoms to get free shit, right? And we don't even know if that's accurate information we're getting either. Obviously, we, we don't go and, and fact check anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We just take Siri for her word. I was telling Zachary about doing term papers for high school, yeah, and how before the internet, you had to have three sources, and our first source was Encyclopedia Britannica, and I thought to myself when I was doing those, like, well. Isn't everything in the encyclopedia right? Why do I have to go get two more sources? Right. And the teacher's like, no, you have to have three. Three. I, I need to see three sources on that paper. But uh, you guys remember the Britannica? I, no, I, I can remember pre uh, computer days. No internet, and, and you're out in the library trying to research. And it was, and, that was and a lot there, of work. There was two big companies there was Britannica and there was Collier's. Collier's I had the Britannica. Like, we, had, like, we had Britannica. We, we had Collier's because I guess that was like the Chevy to the to the Cadillac of, of uh, <laughs> right encyclopedia. <laughs> they had every other page. <laughs> <laughs> well, the photos were only in black and white; they weren't in color. And we had the you had like the A, the Bs, the Cs, and then the, 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 they, they, they were in like alphabetical. Some, but but some of them were so so long, like you had S S to S E. And then yeah, some were shorter than others, so yeah. you had them combined into into one. So it wasn't just twenty six. There was you know some there were like thirty or thirty two or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and my parents were cheap, so we they wouldn't buy them sometimes. So we had holes in there. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't buy them, or you they you just had to, turned up missing. You had to keep paying yeah. for the yeah. next one. Had to borrow somebody's library card, right? <laughs> right. It's That's what you got for your like, birthday. It wasn't like, encyclopedias? Like books. <laughs> that and underwear oh, <laughs> and socks. Books. Frank, I'm, I mean, I'm tickled pink to hear that you guys uh, are all about innovation and uh, moving forward and you know, not bringing out the same old, same old. Uh, it does my heart good because that's what we're all about on this show. We want to we talk about innovation. We want to push and promote innovation. And uh, POF is definitely one of those companies that, uh, thank you. That, that waves the banner of innovation in our industry. So thank you for everything that you're doing uh, for, for our industry and, and pushing everybody to the next level. Well... Do you want to follow or do you want to lead in life? That's right. Do you want to live life? That's right. Or you're going to you be alive, wanna, live. Yes. Or do you just want to watch it go by? And then on your deathbed said, well, I could have and I should have. There's no control, alternate, delete, to reboot. It's over. Right. Because like you, in 1992, November 11th at 8.30 in the morning, I say goodbye to my family because I had a brain tumor. And I'm deaf in my left ear, and my facial doesn't move perfectly. But I understand you and know how you feel. I don't didn't live through what you did, but I understand. So I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but it's kind of a way of waking you up. There's more to life than paper with ink on it. Mm. That's what everyone's yeah. pining for. The and almighty a group dollar. Of people right here that are friends and talking, family and friends is the most valuable thing in the whole entire world. The, the people at this show. I come with nothing and I leave with nothing. Other than they put clothes on me because they don't want to see my fat, wrinkly ass. Because <laughs> when I was a baby, it was cute, right? <laughs> the people at this show. And sometimes make they it take the tie back. Too. I just can't imagine Frank as a baby. Yeah. Oh, geez. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tolerate this city if it wasn't for the people that I get to see that's it, it's the, this city is a necessary evil it is you know Zach this is Zach's first shot show oh, he's been to NRA a couple times but this is his first shot show he's got to be shell shocked and he hates it and by the he way hates, doesn't hates everyone it. you have the power because you have a voice so hey, you need to here's something that we do need to talk about 
because the industry, the NRA, I love them, but they aren't doing this a real good job as an industry as a whole. And and SSF, we're here with them. They don't tell the message. So let's see. I hear a bunch of people on how they talk green, and they want a society that's clean and everything. So. This little company started out of the garage with 25 grand. I'm no different than every person at this table or every listener you have. I'm just a regular American. I'm no better than anyone. I've had the opportunity because of freedom to try something to fail or succeed. Um, Trump emulates that in a lot of ways to me. Mm. Um, He's been more successful and he's very confident may be arrogant but he doesn't put up with bullshit but the cool thing is is this we don't even tell and most shooters that own firearms probably don't even know this but this industry is paying 11 percent of their gross income Mm -hmm. for conservation so that's for our environment so when i make my products and our prints all specify american-made materials Right. And any products we do, we either manufacture here, and if I use products, the companies, because of me, I'm in aerospace and watched it got outsourced in the 90s and decimated aerospace in Phoenix, Arizona, and watched hundreds of shops close down, manufacturing facilities close down because of outsourcing for cheap slave labor overseas. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of trinkets here, made in countries that are people of slaves. And what's their environment like? So not only do we do 11% to help our environment, so we're actually conservationists. Oh, wait, we're really green. My factory that we built from the ground up, my wife and I, we recycle all our trash. We recycle all our metals, all the chips from manufacturing and everything. Mm -hmm. We have all LED lighting, and we have our own solar plant on our roof which provides 68% of our utility bill. And wow. we're 100% air conditioned, guys, because we're in Phoenix, Arizona. you got to have that air, yeah. So it's not just for the office. It's the factory. Why? Because that's where the magic happens. That equipment has to be stabilized in, ther- in a temperature-controlled environment. And my employees need to have an environment. Wait, we could take it even better. My employees get 401ks and match 3%. We're a small business and my wife and I to keep our employees happy we pay 100% of their medical insurance. There is not one penny I need to go to work for you. I was going to say, are you accepting applications? (laughs) No, I'm not trying to brag. No, this is awesome. What I'm trying to say is the outreach from our industry, people need to know that we touch real families, real lives we provide work for people, and this is a different discussion. It's not about a widget yeah. anymore. It's about a life, a lifestyle, and freedom, and it's about what we're doing. I'm not this evil manufacturer of evil things. I'm providing a livelihood and a lifestyle that's good and fair for the people. There is nothing that says my wife and I have to pay 100% of our employees medical insurance. And with Obamacare, Mm. Our insurance in two years went up over 100%. I could literally buy land next door, build another factory the same size, and pay for the utility bill for what we pay in monthly costs for our medical insurance for our employees. Man. So all I'm saying, and I'm not trying to be holier than thou, I'm saying... We're doing things the right way, mm-hmm. the fair way. I'm not abusing people. I'm not using slave labor or other human beings that should have a fair life and have the best thing for their families. I'm not better than them. They need to stand up like we did on April 19th, 1775 and said, we will be free and we will fight for that freedom. So those people in those countries need to do that too because... These big companies, I don't see these big, huge corporations, Google, you know, Nike, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hey, how about Patagonia that's here that gave shit to Camelback? 
we're not going to use Countback because Vista owns Savage. Right. And that CEO pompous ass, holier than thou, as he's importing all his fucking shit from China. <laughs> from China. From slaves paying no money to help the environment as and they're and destroying. these are the stories the NRA needs to tell. <laughs> as they're destroying the air, the water. We're and going the to land. tell them here on Talking Lead. <laughs> no, it's it. No, this is what I'm saying is this, this is reality. Great. Absolutely. This is reality. And people Have need I to lied? know it. So no. you're trying to vilify someone because their organization sells firearms and you're telling your people to buy my my product from and go out in the environment and use it? Who's fucking paying for keeping that that environment clean? Keeping that the environment firearms industry. open. Yeah. You're fucking there, there's no right. greater group of, of conservationists than the than firearms owners. And so, that's something that always gets me. And that's the why these boneheads don't understand. Well, and, and They're trying to shut down the people who are, are making so, it possible for conservation. See, I'm not a good messenger because I'll go right to the juggler. Because <laughs> I don't like bullshit. I call bullshit and a, a spade is a spade. Absolutely. So I may not be the politically correct way of the message. You're a student But it's a country. factual statement. It's a factual statement. That so is what we talk here. Don't be trying to put your political bullshit views and trying to say you're so great as you're using slaves and your spreadsheet looks really good and you've done jack shit to help the environment. So who's green? Yeah, the Absolutely. firearms industry is, baby. That's right, we are. Because we are actually putting money in the game. We have skin in the game. Because we pay normal taxes like everyone. We're paying an excise tax. 11% of our gross business goes, goes to right to the treasury. Boom. And that's what Amen. people don't realize. I need to introduce you. To, do you know C.J. Buck? Buck Knives? No, I do not. Buck Knives? I need to introduce you to C.J. You guys get along good. Does he, uh, <laughs> does he speak the truth like Frank? He, he speaks, and, but he... <laughs> But but he lives the truth like Frank as well, you know uh, the the Wait, recycling and you know. we're all doing it though, guys. No, yeah. it's just the conservationist. Message, the message hasn't been resoundingly right, and if we have that message to show everyone, I don't care what gender you are. You're either male or female. That's what your gender is. No, yeah. that's science. Let's call it, it gender. Yeah, <laughs> but and that's why we exist as humans, right? But at the end of the day, we live in this place called Earth. You can pollute the water all you want. What happens if the sun fails to come up and burn? We're done. It's over. Lights out. Yeah. So it's already over. At the end of the day, let's make the best for what we are. Frank, that was that was a, a, a very welcomed, unexpected um, truth. Truthism. We'll call it a Frankism. There you go. We'll start calling them Frankly speaking. Needs to be a regular I gotta guest. have you on the show more right. often. Absolutely. Hell yeah, it's man. Great. You should come out and see the uh, I'm facility because it's it's a tribute to the opportunity that America gives. Oh, I love to tour. Uh, love, love to tour your facility. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that would be an honor of mine. Any of you are welcome anytime. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to talk about you real quick before we get off here. Uh, Sorry. Competition wise, uh, talk about what you got going on and uh, who all you've got uh, uh, backing you these days. So Team Safari Lands is going to do a bunch of matches yeah. this year. We'll be shooting nationals, uh, three-gun nationals in April in Florida. They get their Chandler Smith down there at the Universal Shooting Academy, put on a great match last year. We're going to go back there again. And then a week later, we're going to do the PCC nationals. Oh, and nice. then the team tells me i got to shoot the single stack nationals and the <laughs> L10 nationals in, in Alabama the next month, which I haven't shot a handgun nationals in 10 years. But you know what? It's going to be challenging and fun, and I'm looking forward to uh, – you got to do it, so you got to do it. Well, I'm going to do it, yeah, exactly, but it's going to be fun because the team's a bunch of great guys. And Scott Carnahan, he's uh, been with uh, Safari Land for, for 40 years. This is his 40th shot show, and he's oh, he's wow. finishing up, and uh, this is going to be, he's going to retire this year. He's going to go out on a swan song. We're going to go do a bunch of matches together and have a great time and kind of wishing him farewell. He's done a great well, job. Farewell well tour. Correct. And yeah. uh, Safari Land's been, you know, more than generous to, 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 to me, and then they've also done so much for law enforcement and military with all the saves and stuff and just seeing all the stuff they've developed over the last 40 years it's it's, it's a privilege to be associated with it. oh absolutely yeah and i appreciate you introducing the lead heads and and hooking them up with uh, these discounts from safari land too they, yeah. more coming if you need it they greatly appreciate those so yeah yeah definitely so i'm looking forward to uh the season so keep us up to date on how things are going 
Uh, now you're going to be running uh, the POF, I, I would assume, the, the new Rogue. You're going to run the Rogue? Uh, he's going to get the Rogue to me. We're going to go out and start testing it. I've got the Revolution set up, ready to go. So either one's going to be, whatever gets to me, you know, the matches come up pretty fast and furious this time of year. So we'll see what, if I can get the Rogue and get it up and running, absolutely. Uh, Was then, that a hint you just dropped? You said what? fast and furious. <laughs> Is that another movie you're working on? What, what? No, that, <laughs> huh? That, huh? That, that's when you give guns to Mexican drug cartels. <laughs> or that, yeah. That takes <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of code going on today. A lot of code dropping, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Akai Custom Guns for the handguns, uh, Breda shotguns. It's uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on three-gun. Collis is now kind of taking over for Suaro in terms of his sister company. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Suaro's just going to do the hunting scopes, but Collis is going to do all the three-gun and PRS stuff. Beautiful scopes, beautiful glass. I, I worked at their booth this week and was really happy to see it. Um, I'm going to be running those this year. It's going to be great. Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. And I really enjoy the, the videos that you drop on uh, Instagram, those little quick, you know, watch me well, you do know, this. I, I just wanted to show. Do. I just wanted to show. <laughs> watch me you, do what you can't do. You could do a one second <laughs> reload with a 308 rifle. I want to see anybody else do that with any other brand. That's yeah. all. I just want to see it once. Cause it, Wait, it, there's more than one second was point nine. Uh, you know, I'll give, I'll give him credit. <laughs> give, give, give me some under a second, because it's it's uh, that the, the the POFs then the weapon handling is as good as a two two three five five six. That's the difference. I mean, it, the the manipulations, the the field craft is just so much. It's so much similar. Yeah. You just can't do that with the other guns because they're too heavy. They don't load. You stuff a magazine, and it falls out. It, the the tech that he's put in is above and beyond. Very cool. Uh, and give the website uh, for our listeners where so they can go check out the, the new Rogue. Uh, POF-USA.com. Very cool. And you guys are on all the uh, the social media. You're on Instagrams and, and Facebooks and all that. MySpace. Very cool. MySpace. <laughs> Is that still a thing? I hope not. <laughs> I actually think it's, I think it's just devolved now to just like indie bands and stuff like that. Yeah. I got you. But I, then, think, I think Tom's still my friend, though. Okay. I hope he's still my friend. He said he was my friend. And Keith, your Instagrams are? Uh, uh, Keith, Facebook. <laughs> Keith Garcia 3 Gun and uh, on Instagram. And then just Facebook, my name. And uh, come, cool. come look at some videos and uh, see how great uh, the POF rifles are and Akai Custom Guns and Brady USA. And we'll do some match stuff this year. And Safari Land's got all the gear if you need it. So if you need a 40% off coupon, hit up uh, Marty. He'll, there you uh, he'll go. Get it out to you go. Talking Just put in there, give me a Safari Land discount, and I'll hook you guys up. So. Keith, thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you. I mean, really, thank you for bringing Frank. It's a pleasure to, to meet you. You're welcome on the show anytime, brother. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, come on whenever you want. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it. And maybe we'll come up to Arizona and uh, get a tour. We'd love to do that, too. No problem. Check out that Being facility. Honor. Go in the winter. Don't go in the summer. <laughs> He's got an indoor It's a dry heat. He's got an indoor it's range. It's a dry heat. So is, so is my <laughs> oven. It's a dry He's got air conditioning. He just said. He's got air conditioning. So. I have an electric oven that's dry heat. Yeah. You don't want to be Paul, there. you going to stick around with me for a, for a minute? Um, actually, we got to uh, get going. I'm going to have a grandbaby soon, hopefully. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, One uh, on the way. Got yeah, they, she's, she's laboring. She, I don't, she, she's probably hating life because she's been little laboring door. a little Little fedora. Little fedora on the way. And we got one more appointment, and then we're going to hit the road. All right, we're well, going to get on the road. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, you know, you and I will be in touch, and yes, indeed, we'll, we'll have you on. So, more coming from the 2020 Shot Show here from the official lead quarters at Buck Knives. Okay, lead heads, that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Those are some great interviews there that I put together. We've got lots more coming. The next episode that I'm going to be dropping, uh, we did several interviews with the ladies of the firearms industry, uh, and we've got several different interviews there, and I think we're going to call the next episode For the Ladies. Uh, It's going to be a really good one. We're going to have Christy Titus, Morgan Mills, Jen and Arissa from Girls with Guns. We've got the ladies of Buck Knives that we did a big, that we did an awesome interview with that you're going to love. And then we've got a new lady from the industry on joining us. Uh, she goes by the Mounted Shooter on Instagram. It's Courtney Johnson, and uh, she talks about mounted shooting sports. So that's that was a very good interview. It's probably one of my favorite interviews that I did during the entire shot show. So make sure you let all the lady leadheads know that that episode is coming up. Uh, something for them that they could probably relate to. Maybe a little more than a lot of this uh, macho male stuff that we usually talk about. So, 
Anyway, we try to have a little something for everyone on this show. And then just real quick, some things we got coming up. We got the Sheepdog Impact Assistance uh, annual gala coming up. That's where they have the uh, the fundraising auction, where we usually get a lot of our sponsors and friends of the show that kick in and have some uh, really cool auction items that we put up. Uh, and then they will usually have like an online auction where you can actually not attend, but you can bid on some of the items that they have available. So we'll give you more info as that gets near. Uh, and that's going to be sometime around NRA, which, you know, I told you earlier, Keltec is going to be the official lead quarters for Talking Lead at NRA this year. So if you're going to be in Nashville, uh, or if you're not planning on it, plan on it. You need to come to Nashville for NRA this year. It's going to be an awesome time. And uh, Keltec is uh, making it possible, making the lead quarters happen. We're going to be doing some great interviews there. And we might, have, might uh, even have some cool giveaways. But one more time before I get out of here and go uh, pack up and head out to help Sheepdog Impact Assistance take care of some of these hard-hit areas here in the Middle Tennessee area, go and show our sponsors some love. Keltec Weapons at keltecweapons.com. Fioki Ammo. Check them out, fiokiusa.com. Buck Knives. Buckknives.com. And you guys, you know you know the website. You can find them. You just Google them. Mission First Tactical, Smith & Bradley Watches, Century Arms. we got the AK Corner coming up, and it's going to be an awesome AK Corner. I made a post on Instagram and Facebook. Post your questions. It's going to be a listener-centric show for the AK Corner. We're going to try and address all your questions that you have that are AK-47, AK-74, anything with the AK, uh, variants, questions that you have got some history questions we're gonna have a surprise panel uh, that's going to address all those and then we're picking one lucky lead head uh, and we're gonna have you on the show with us so be checking your emails be checking your social media uh, instant messages whatever those are called because I might be contacting you to be on the show with us and then to make up for our last episode where we didn't give anything away on the AK Corner, we're going to have two lucky winners this this uh, episode. So things to look forward to. If you have questions, you got Jack Wagon nominations, you got Leadhead Brigade Heroes, uh, or you just got any kind of comments at all that you want to uh, send my way, email's the best way, talkinglead at gmail.com, and then just put in the subject, whatever it may be. And uh, as, as people know that, that send me emails or contact me on social media, I'm really good about getting back with you. So that does it, guys. I got to get out of here. Until next episode, as always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close and your firearms closer. <laughs>